Hi guys, uh, this is my second video on WCF service. The first lesson uh, we saw how to create a service and unfortunately I want to like to make a point here that the service that I created on the first video I, I lost it and uh, what I have done is I have created uh, a new service uh, a new implementation of uh, WCF service and then I have written the client code also uh, so I'm just going to explain how to write the client code and before that uh, we're going to also have a look at how to host WCF service on IIS 7.5 so these are the two tasks that we're going to see today so number one is going to we're going to see how to host WCF service in IIS 7.5 and number two is how to consume that service that we have hosted on the on the the IAS 7.5 uh, that that can be used by your client application. Okay, let's get started. So before getting into our uh, walkthrough, we have to ensure that we have installed IIS 7.5 on your machine. To do that, just click on Start, go to Control Panels, and click Programs, and go to Turn on Windows Feature on or off. So turn Windows Feature on or off. And this one is going to take a while, so I'm going to pause the video and get back soon. There you go. So this one will list out the, all the features in your uh, Windows machine and make sure you select Internet Information Services and make sure that you have selected all the options in red and click OK. So that will install all the necessary features for your Internet Information Services on uh, your operating system. So uh, first you have to install all the features in your IS and make sure you open this particular MMC. This is called IS Manager. So make sure you open IS Manager and run as administrator. And at the same time, open your Visual Studio and make sure you're running as an administrator. So uh, so have a look at my first video and and have a, uh, have a look at it on how to create a WCF service and that is what the first video is and in, in this video now we're going to take we're going to focus on how to host the WCF service so imagining I'm going to give you a, a, a snapshot about about what my service that I have right now in this solution so I have a data access layer called as products entity model so all I have done is I've created an entity framework uh, .edmx file and uh, this one talks to my AdventureWorks database that is running on my SQL instance. So I have my SQL instance and the focus of this video is not to explain what AdventureWorks database and how to connect to the AdventureWorks database. So I'm least interested on this video. So I have written a service, I have a service.svc file which talks to uh, to my, uh, which has my products entity models DLL file and if you go to the bin folder you can see I have the reference to the products entity model how did I do that I just right click on my products entity model clicked on build so it builds me the DLL file and go to my service right click on it and click add reference uh, and then the build has started so my system is really slow so please be patient So the build succeeded, so I'm going to right click on my service and say add reference. So when I click add reference, what's going to happen here is I'm going to choose my product entity model DLL file onto the project tab and click OK. So when I click OK right now it complains me that it already exists. So uh, that's how you have to add a, re add a reference to your uh, service uh, if you have a data access layer so alright so we're gonna see how to host 
this particular thing so when you right click on this project you will see publish website you will see publish website option if you have built your service on a web application template if you have used uh, uh, a template like uh, the WCF uh, that comes by default in Visual Studio 2010 let's say you have used one of this WCF service application that is a WAS application WAS uh, application then you, when you right click on your on your project here it will be publish it's not it's not different uh, it's just the same and it's self-explanatory so you can follow it make sure that you have published website and then you click on this ellipsis and choose default website and click open so I'm going to say this one as my service and I call this one will be your application that will be hosted on your default website so click OK. So now you can see the status. You can have a look at your status and say it's published, started, and it succeeded. So now go to your IAS uh, manager and click on your server. And if you open this, I would like to explain about the IAS a little bit so that it might be really helpful for the starters. So so you have your default website and if you go to your default website, you should be able to see the service that we published, which is my service make sure that this is your website go to your advanced setting and make sure it is running ASP Darknet 4.0 uh, as the application pool if you don't have 4.0 um, just click on your application pool if you don't see 4.0 application pool here it means you have installed 4.0 so now select on this application go to advanced setting and make sure your application pool has been set to ASP.NET 4.0 Classic. Click OK and go to application pool. Each and each and every time when you make some changes on your application or on your website, go to applications pool, go to ASP and, and refresh or recycle the necessary application pool, and that's more than enough. So right now what we're going to test here is click on the my service application, go to content view click services.svc and click browse and this should <coughs> render your WCF service that you have hosted on IIS so voila so we have done that so right now click on this applic uh, this link you should be able to see the wisdom file web services description language so this is an XML file which explains you the the, 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 the information, the all minute information that you need to share with your client and also the client can understand when they want to consume your service. So that's what the web services description language is all about. So please Google and have a look what is WSDL uh, is all about. So okay, we have hosted the service. Now we'll look at my client side code I'm going to delete this reference to make sure that I can show you guys on how to do that so first let's look at how to consume a service on our client machine so what you have to do is this is my client project and I'd like to imagine hypothetically that you have done the development of your client uh, not the development of your client but you have created your client project the first thing you have to do is right click on your client project and click add service reference so once you have chosen service reference I would insist you to open this one again and click back copy this uh, HTTP address click paste and click go it should be able to ping your IAS service that is your application that is running on IS manager yes it is fine it is able to find it and uh, I'm going to give this one as product products service and click OK and this will create a stub on your client side <coughs> and uh, if you go to app.config file you should be able to see all the bindings 
and the necessary endpoints. So this is the endpoint which has the address binding and contract, the ABC of your <coughs> of your application. So address is the place where you want to go and meet the service, and the binding is going to tell you the language in which uh, you're going to speak that it tells on what way you're going to communicate with the service and you have the contract which tells which which exposes the service exposes the basic uh, <clears throat> the passport for you to understand the language in which you have to speak with your service uh, if it's if it is really complicated I would advise you to go to my first video and have a look at it and learn the basics of what is address binding and contract and how it works everything with the service and uh, the basic HTTP binding all the information of your binding will be exposed and will be written over here so that your client application can use them so let's go to the programs program.cs file and have a look at how I have written the client so this is a class so whenever you create a service and you call the service as products service or let's say this one as ABC then you have a class created for you called ABC client so if you call this one as ABC so it will be ABC client you have a class called ABC client how can you check that class name of the class double click on the product services if you go to products client dot product services you unzip this one and you would be able to see product service client and you can see all your service methods here uh, that is available in your stock so what I have done is I've created an instance of this class and using that proxy I'm just calling this method this is the simplest method which lists out the product from your product table so if you click on my data access layer which is on the service side I have my products table so what that method does is just pings this particular table and gets you all the product a list of product codes so that's what it's doing so I'm looping through so what this method does is it turns a string array of product numbers and I'm writing a simple for each loop and it's looping through and you can I'm printing out uh, the product number which is uh, evident uh, and uh, that's all my code is so it's so simple and self explanatory so uh, I'm going to hit run so do you think this one will work <clears throat> since I am working and uh, since I have hosted my application on IS manager this will not work oh god it's working I want to make a point here okay the point that I was like to make here was actually if you open your IAS I forgot to reset back if you check your classic app pool your integ your identity will be application pool identity <clears throat> so if your application pool identity is going to be uh, If your identity is going to be an application pool identity, it will not work. That's what my whole point is. And this is what the default setting of your application pool will be. So that's the point that I was trying to make. So if you run, it will not list your products. This is because uh, IAS requires your application to have the credential to talk to the database so in that case what you have to do is you have to create a windows account and that windows account should be uh, should be <clears throat> accessible or that windows account should be able to access your databases that is running on your SQL server instance so my account is if you right click and go to properties you would be able to see my account my computer name is this and my full computer name is this one so I have used Windows authentication if I connect yes I am able to talk to my service instance uh, my SQL server server instance so what you have to also check that you have to go to your database and right click on your database 
sorry, uh, unzip your database and go to security and go to users, you should be able to see who are the people who should be able to access this particular database. And if you want to go and see at the server instance level, if you go to login, you should see this guy. This is my Windows account and that should be there. So, which tells you that you have the rights to access the database. So, to check whether you have access to the database, right click on the database and go to properties. And uh, should be able to see the access permission level. Should be able to see people who can access. So I am owning this database. So uh, which tells me that I I am a legitimate user to access Adventure Works. So that's the point I'm trying to make. So what I have to do here on the IAS is go to the application pool, go to advanced settings. Since it is a desk desktop machine, I don't have Active Directory installed uh, on on the server. So this is desktop machine. So I have to choose local system and click OK, click OK and recycle it. And let me restart the whole server because I'm not happy with the application pool. It has to yeah pick up some value for the applications that are trying to use this application pool. So it was zero if you had noticed it. <coughs> So uh, let's run again and it should work. <clears throat> and uh, that's it in this video guys. And this is how you have to host your service uh, uh, on IIS. And, uh, and uh, first you have to check a few things. Once you have hosted your service, you have to check whether your service is able to uh, <clears throat> you are able to access your service on the browser and at the same time uh, make sure you have your app pool settings properly done uh, properly set up uh, as I have mentioned in this video and then uh, you also learned on how to consume the service on the client side and uh, and uh, that's it in this video I hope you, you guys will have enjoyed it See you next time.